Hello, I'm Katie from Katie Kicker and thanks for joining me. So today I want to do something a little bit different for me and I want to share with you my top three money habits which I think help me to manage my family finances better in the hope that obviously they will help you do the same as well. The first tip for me would have to be to meal plan. Now meal planning really for me goes hand in hand with batch cooking and sticking to a shopping list. Now, for the last few months during the lockdown period in the UK, we've been using recipe boxes. So we've had HelloFresh and Gusto, Mindful Chef, and also I've had some times where I've just bought really nice ready meals so that dinner was nice and straightforward for us. But I've tied that into my more normal style of meal planning, which is that every week on a Tuesday, typically, I will sit down and I'll get a list of everything that we've got on hand from the fridge and freezer that I want to use up. Some weeks I skip the sort of stock check part and just run with what I know that we've definitely got from memory. But other weeks I like to have um, 10 minutes where I look through the fridge and the freezer and just make sure that I'm utilising everything that we've got in so that really there's no food waste in our house. The main thing that makes up food waste is just fruit and vegetable peelings and perhaps the odd thing that we've offered to the cat that she hasn't eaten because she's fussy and we just never learn that she's not going to eat the stuff. So I sit down and I make my list meal plan and I think about past meals that we've enjoyed I've got lots of recipes on my blog I will link some down below in the description box and I just think about the weather that's coming up if it's going to be sunny we're going to want more lighter foods salads and barbecue foods and if it's going to be raining and cold then we're probably going to want a slightly more hearty meal and if I'm having a busy period of work because I do the bulk of the cooking in my home then I will make sure that I'm planning some slow cooker meals because you just can't beat that productive feeling of putting dinner in the slow cooker in the morning and at the end of a busy day everything is ready and waiting for you pretty much I feel that by going shopping with a list even if from shopping online which I do quite often I feel that it helps me to keep motivated not to buy too many snacks and too much rubbish although I do veer away from the list a little bit and also I feel that generally it means that we eat better we have set meals each day that we stick to pretty religiously and it just really removes some of the mental load for me from motherhood being a wife and also working and caring for people as well yeah. definitely my top tip for managing our finance would be to meal plan because if I don't meal plan then we end up having a takeaway or we end up before lockdown we end up going out to eat and it ends up being quite expensive and obviously that then means that we blow the budget for food for the week and then it's a bit of a downward spiral from there where you know the mindset of damaging your budget or blowing your budget tends to be well it's done now so might as well take my foot off the gas for everything my second tip would have to be to use a finance app which takes a little bit of money from your bank account every few days and puts it into a pot for you. And the reason that I talk about this specifically is I did recently work with Plum on an advert. So I'm just going to put ad here just to make sure that it's clear that I have worked with them on an advert in the past. So a finance app where it squirrels away a little bit of money for you. And the reason that I like that is you can set yourself a goal of what you're aiming to save. And for me, I'm aiming to save £300 towards a new washing machine because I think that mine's on its last leg. And I'm aiming to save £3,000 towards a 2021 house purchase because that's actually more than the budgeted money that I will need to spend to buy my house. I do think that you need to err on the side of caution when you're buying a house. Those are my goals that I'm working towards financially. A couple of my goals. I like Plum because it's really straightforward. It seems to be really accurate at estimating how much money I'm going to spend. I have it set to beast mode at the moment, which makes me feel like I'm being really productive and motivated with my money. And it is squirreling money away nicely. I'm not really noticing the money leaving my account, but I love the little features like every day that it rains, it will take two pounds. Now it lumps the days together and it just takes the money once a week on a Wednesday, which is great. And it gives me advance notice that it's going to take the money. And also I love the 52 week savings challenge. Now what that is, is each week it will take amount of money that is one pound greater than the previous week so week one is one pound week 10 is 10 pounds week 20 is 20 pounds etc and that just feels like a really good way to put a little bit of money aside i love things that help you gamify your finances feel that for me i love that little step that helps you towards your goal but isn't really painful it's just taking a little bit of money each week putting it in a pot which i can access if i need to and it all just feels really straightforward the app works really well it loads quick and 
I actually like the little daily notification telling me how much money um, is in my accounts because it means I don't have to log into everything, which is ideal for just, you know, a little reassuring check that I haven't had any problems because previously my debit card was cloned at a pay at pump cash a petrol station and so i can just see at a glance how much money's in there how much is available and there's even a little button that i can press to just put 15 pounds away if i want to and so just feel that for a finance tip you should definitely get started with finance app they use open banking which means that you can see all of your account information at a glance which is really convenient you don't have to log into multiple banks anymore but most importantly is secure so you're not actually providing the app with your login details they're just accessing like a read-only copy of what's in your account and it's just very straightforward and I love how easy that is now my third tip would have to be to keep on top of your household bills now what I mean is rent mortgage etc they're pretty fixed aren't they council tax unfortunately is pretty fixed too it's too much money I know but then when you move down the tier and you have things like gas electric water um, TV phone broadband Netflix Spotify Amazon etc there are little ways that you can save some money and I think it's really important not to overlook those changes so recently I had a Netflix plan where it had four screens Screens. there are three of us in my home and occasionally there's another person here uh, or another two people here and so we had the four screen package because there was one time where we wanted to have four screens being used at once but I realized recently that I'm overpaying by a couple of pounds a month and that over the year that is three and a half months of my membership that I would get for free if I just downgraded my package to the next tier down. So I think it's really important at least every six months to sit down and look at all your direct debits, standing orders, all of those subscriptions and think about which ones you actually use. Are you actually getting value for money from Amazon Prime? Are you actually using the family package on Spotify? You know, like me, do you need Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, Now TV, Hey You and Netflix? Probably not because I only watch about 45 minutes of television a day and about 30 minutes of that is on YouTube. And so I probably realized that I had a lot more subscriptions than I actually needed. But also with things like Now TV, if you go into your account to cancel your subscription and you tell them that you're canceling because you can no longer afford the service, sometimes, quite often, they magically have a deal. So for example, Now TV, when I went to cancel the Sky Movies, because we do use it, but I wanted to get a discount, it was able to offer me instead of 11 99 a month it was able to offer me 5 99 a month and that was for 12 months but i could cancel at any time and it would end at the end of that current month subscription date like on the 15th of the month or whatever and so definitely think it's worth a little shop around you know ring your broadband provider and look at if you can get into a new contract with them where perhaps you drop the television package or you get a fixed deal on your broadband and phone and also Although water typically is hard to save money on um, in terms of how much you pay for use per day or per cubic meter, etc. Cubic meter or cubic liter, whichever one, you know, for using water. That's hard to negotiate. You can't really save any money. Although there are sometimes schemes for people that are on low income or disabled. So definitely ask your uh, water company or check their website about that. And also energy. Often people just move tariffs, they get some sort of incentive like cashback or an Amazon voucher or a credit on their next bill and then they just leave the service to run. So look at your provider. I'm with Bulb and I think they're really good value but also their energy is green which I really like because it is a really good way to make a fairly significant difference to your carbon footprint. So I'm going to uh, pop my link referral in the, in the description just in case you want £50 off for switching. They'll switch you over and I think usually if you're in a deal already with an exit fee they may pay that fee for you so definitely ask them about that and yeah just make sure that you're really looking at those monthly things that you're spending on and another option if you are able to afford so financially is to look at paying for things annually so quite often with insurance and with um, energy companies when you pay not on receipt of your bill but by a quarterly or annual payment you can save a couple of pounds on each month's bill now that obviously even two pounds a month adds up significantly over the year so anyway i hope you've enjoyed those three little money habits to help your family finances 
and if you want to see more of these videos drop me a comment or a like and don't forget to subscribe have a lovely day thanks for watching bye